Hey gang, welcome back to Inverted Pursuits Laboratory. As you can probably tell, I've got a giant mess on the table here in front of me. Um, so I've got various sets of 3D printed parts, a big case here with even more 3D printed parts inside of it. Um, but, but what are we doing? Well, we're actually updating the old uh, launch box I built in uh, 2020 for launching my rockets. It was just a little box with uh, two safety switches and a button to set off the rocket. So you turn the switch on, you turn another switch on, and you push the button, you could launch the rocket. And it was powered off of my rigid batteries that I used for my drill. So I had this little adapter here that would allow me to use that. So we're still gonna reuse this part and allow this to be wired in. So it's an optional power source inside our new box. And this box will actually be able to control up to eight pads at the moment. Uh, in the future, it'll be able to hold up to 10. I'll have two auxiliary pads that I'll be able to plug into this box. Um, but these panels here are what I'm using to control it. So I've got half the box that will be controlled via panels. And so on the panel here, um, once it's all mounted in place, we'll have our master arming switch. We'll turn this on and then we'll have pad select. So I've got eight pads up the list here and a corresponding light will turn on all the way up. It will go green, red, yellow, blue, green, red, yellow, blue on the lights here. Uh, so they cycle through, but basically I'll have a little sticker label here on pad one through eight or one through eight. I'm not quite sure which up and down. Um, and then this is our fire switch. So arm, pad select, fire, or you select the pad you want, arm it, it will turn all the lights on and you make sure the lights lit up on the pad you want. And then when you press the fire button, it will launch the rocket. So um, we've got this one panel that's already got all of the LEDs mounted in it. So we're gonna start the process of mounting all of the switches into this pad. And I've got boxes and boxes of parts here because of course I had to order enough to get this done plus enough to well have some extras um, for the moment I am not going to put on uh, they've got they come with bezels as well I'm not going to put the bezels on it uh, I may choose to go back in later and put the on off bezel on there but for now all of the switches will get screwed on as such and I've got the one switch screwed on there real quick and all the lights. And then this inside the box, uh, if I can get that to mount down in there, sits in the front half of the box here and gives us our pad select. My goal is that when it's aiming towards the light that will turn the light on. I've got my uh, light switch there. Um, I also, I guess I'll go ahead and add that in there since I'm thinking about it got uh, my master arm switch. Um, oop, I forgot to drill out that hole. Uh, thankfully, I still got the drill down here real quick. Uh, I undersized everything just a bit. All right. So master arming switch. Then we grab the bed boy. We go through my box of stuff. Um, I am going to go ahead and put the big bad boy on top of it. And put this nut on here. So I'm also doing my master arm switch with a, uh, I made it a, I call it a bomb switch. Uh, it's definitely not what it's called. Um, I forget what they're called, but it's got a spring cover on it so that you can't just accidentally arm the whole system. So this is one of my safeties in place because I want to make sure we don't have any mistakes. These are a lot harder to put on when you don't have a wrench. All right, so that'll be our master arming switch bring everything up. You can also arm it all in one motion. Then we'll have our fire switch. Um, out the back side, going to the pad. So on the back of the box, you'll notice there's a hole. Um, we actually have 
a 10 pin connector so we'll be able to control 10 pads down range i said i'll have an auxiliary attachment that'll go on this board later and then i've got a connector that whoop, other side plugs in and then screws on so this cable connector that will go down to the pad and the pad will have a connector on the opposing side for dealing with it um, will basically store in the empty space over here. So I'll have a coiled up wire. Uh, I may also have a 12 volt battery in here, a uh, 12 volt like lawnmower battery or something in there. Uh, that's kind of the current plan, but we're just gonna keep working on this, chugging through it, and then see how it looks once we are done and have all of the parts in place. Okay, so I've taken the time now to draw up a basic wiring diagram of what I'm trying to do. So without trying to lose you too much, basically we got battery in, I'll have a master switch on, um, as well as a fire button, as well as a pad select switch and a pad select LED that will turn on whenever it turns on. Um, basically everything completes a circuit and then uh, when you turn the pad select switch on, it also activates the out to the pad power. So we've kind of started the process on this already. So this is the lower half of the control board. I want it such that whenever I flip the switch um, towards the light is when it will turn on. So I don't have any power in there right now, um, but I'll have power comes in through the base of the switch here to turn on. So when the base switch is activated, our master switch, um, power comes in, then power goes over to our fire button. Um, so that will be what allows me to fire the rockets off. And then our pad select right now, I'm running power to all of the LEDs. So next I'll jumper this into um, all of the other side of these switches. And right now all I'm doing is just wiring in our um, LEDs. And I'm going down the line and then I will go down the line and wire in every single one of the wires going out to the pad that will then get soldered into these cups on our rear connector. So let's get started on that whole process. Oh, I've wired this whole thing up and I actually have it sitting in the box right now. Um, hopefully you can kind of see that. Um, if not, I'll tip it up in just a second. I am working to wire in some spade connectors onto the end of my primary positive and negative wires. Uh, these will not do anything other than allow me to turn the voltage on and off. Or we'll turn LEDs on and off voltage on and off is obvious. Um, basically, I'll just be able to turn the pretty LEDs inside the box on and off. And determine if I wired this upright. I just want to see it in the box. It's the only reason it's sitting in the box. Um, no, it's upside down. My hand appreciates not getting smushed or pinched. All right, move everything off to the side. All right, so in the box real quick, we can see we've got everything hooked up. So I have designed this to run off of my drill battery. So we are going to wire this up real quick. Um, as soon as I double check which one's positive and which one's negative. That's the positive one. All right, and I'm gonna wrap tape around one of these so I don't short the battery out. Cause that would make me have a really bad day if I short the battery out. All righty. Little flag of tape. battery let's verify again positives going to the positive wire yep okay so 
now I should be able to arm the master switch. And oh, hey, look at that. One at a time as I arm up the pad selects, they turn on. Wow, that is so exciting to see that that all worked. Um, so we've got that. Um, I should go ahead and I need to put a jumper to make this LED work. Uh, which is pretty easy to do. I just got to add a jumper under this panel to the extra tab in there, and then that'll work. But wow, that's exciting to see that all works. So turn all those on again, and then I kill the master, and they all go off. Oh, that's exciting. All right. So the next big thing, aside from I'm going to wire the jumper in there, um, actually, let's go ahead and disconnect power in case something goes wrong, even though I know the master's off. Um, on the outside of the case, I have got my pigtail of wires. This pigtail of wires is what I will be wiring into this socket. So I will solder each one of these in uh, line as to what they are. Um, one of them will be my ground and the rest will be my pad select as to which pads which. Um, I will go through before I do that and I'm gonna label what each one of these wires is because I have no clue. Aside from the fact that I started on a yellow and so one of these yellows is one and the other one is four and the other one is eight. So we're gonna have a good time. All right, gang, well, it has been about a week, and this box we finished um, very clean. We've got a nice little logo on the front. When we pop it open, we've got beautiful interior for everything we are doing. I can plug it into my battery I've got here real quick. Everything lights up. Uh, I've got an issue on channel five here. Um, some of my wiring inside this panel is bad, um, so I'm going to have to get dig around in that, but otherwise it all works and it all looks really good. Um, but aside from that, this box is only part of the project. So we've got our exit for our cable out the back, and then we've got this. This is a 50 foot cable that I just love. So I've got a connection point here. And if I line it all up properly, it plugs in right there and screws its way in. And then on the other side, I've got all of these banana jacks um, spaced out just so. And I bought some parts that if I want to like um, make plugs for them so I can plug them into something um, like at a launch base or into a continuity checker box that this could all plug into something else to allow me to do checks um, but i can also just attach um, alligator clips or short leads with alligator clips on the end of them to attach to these banana jacks that way i can rapidly uh, just use it the way it is so it's built with a lot of versatility and a lot of like built-in add-ons uh, in the future i want to be able to use this for years to come and have little to no issue with it as we move forward uh, but we have this fully completed now. Um, if you're interested in trying to find the files to make one of these yourself, um, I've got the files for this listed on printables. Uh, there's a link in the description down below. You can go download all of the STLs for even these little uh, 3D printed cable plugs, uh, the entire interior here. I have, I also have a list of all the parts used on the printables listing so that you can find everything that I used in this build and build one of these for yourself. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing down below. Uh, it really helps us out a ton as we work to grow this channel. Um, if you're interested in uh, finding the files, again, they're available on printables. There's a link in the description down below. And I'll see you all in the next video.